and welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley and I'm a six figure reseller on Poshmark and eBay. Today I'm gonna to go over how I photograph my items. I'm gonna get into it pretty quickly here. Just to give a little intro of today's video, I'll go over how I photograph my tops and my dresses, which is modeling, and then also how I edit those, how I take photos of my pants and anything that doesn't fit me, and then how I edit those, as well as the shoes and editing those. And then at the end of the video here, I'll go over a little bit about my history History of how I used to photograph my items and what got me to where I am today with photographing them and also a little bit of things that I have learned along the way. Also, I do have a little giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. If there's any particular items you're wanting to see, I'll put some timestamps below so you can skip forward right to those. But let's get started into how I photograph slash model my dresses and my tops. Okay, so we're gonna start off here with how I model my items. And I'm gonna start off with going through my background that I currently have set up. So in terms of my background, this is pretty much it. That does not need to be there. So essentially just act like that is the wall. But pretty much this is what I have for my background. And I've had that pretty much set up for over a year now. It's simple, it's clean. So I got this from my house. So there's really no like link for that, but you can pretty much get any plant. I do think taller plants are nice or any like of the thicker leaves would be nice. Maybe I'll link some options that I find online down below. And then I got this rack from Amazon and then I'd go ahead and just put a couple items on here, just some like neutral tones. These are all things that I'm selling that I put up here. I used to keep all my items that I was photographing right there because I had no space, but now I have storage here. So that way I just keep it aesthetically pleasing by putting those colors up there. And then I have this little basket just because those are the items I use for pants and tank tops and slips to fit for photographing. I did get this rug from Rugs USA. I believe I'll link that down below. And I have it because the color of this floor is this. And so I just wanted to keep it nice and white. So if you have a just regular carpet, don't feel the need to buy a rug. This is the only reason why I have this rug here. And then the mirror is, I'll put the dimensions down below. I think it's 72 inches tall, um, maybe 36 inches wide, I don't remember. But I'll put the link, it's from Home Depot and I like it because it has thinner frame and so therefore it doesn't really intrude on the photo as much versus having a really big frame like I did before. So that is everything with my setup. And as you can see here, this is kind of what it looks like. And now I'll go into how I pose for my items. Just know that I like I don't really wear jeans most of the time. I wear like either leggings or um, skinny jeans for my photos, but you can kind of wear whatever, I guess, whatever you're photographing. And also I have the camera turned the other way, so it's gonna look a little different, but I'll try to mock a little bit of how I photograph. So the first photo I will take, I take it face on, and then usually I always cover my face because I don't wear makeup and I don't want to get makeup on my clothing and I don't want to have to always put on makeup when I photograph. So that is why I cover my face just to distract from it. And also it gives people the option to kind of envision themselves into it. And then I now put my hair behind my back when I photograph because it helps see the item a little bit better. And so I'll step back a little bit here, but usually I stand pretty much close. And most of the time I stand about like this far away, maybe like two feet away and essentially if it's a longer dress, I'll try to get the full dress, but otherwise I usually get like my knees to my head. That is the frame. And I don't really get much above my head. Usually I will either have it like tilted this way where it's the top of my head, just a little bit above. That's kind of how I angle it down. So my first pose, I'll cover my face and usually like I'll pop a leg out and then like kind of put my weight on here and kind of push my hips back. And that's kind of usually how I'll stand, as you can see my toes kind of like up. And then I'll just keep my hand down, kind of rest it. I don't like put it back or I just kind of like, like if you're getting a shot and they tell you to relax your hand, like that's kind of what I do. And then I just take it here and that is like the first photo. And then for the second photo, just because sometimes it can, my arm can block this just to get more of like everything. I will like take it from the side, same type of pose. I'll like do the same thing and kind of lean back or depending on the item, it looks better just like straight on. 
and I'll like push my hips out a, back, a bit back and then just like stand that way. And that's how I'll take that photo. My feet are like that much apart. And then lastly, I'll do the side. And so I'll turn to the side and I will pop this leg forward. My feet are pretty much together. I'll rest my hand right here. And usually like I'll turn this way a little bit and then put all my weight on that side and then take the side and kind of like lean into like that hip there and then I'll get the side. If it's a really nice back or something, I'll try to turn a little bit more. If not, I'll kind of just like side look. If I'm doing a maxi dress because a lot of people like to know the length of it, I'll just do the, I'll stand straight up and kind of take the bottom so people can see how long till it hits the floor. And that's pretty much all I have for when I'm modeling items in the mirror. After I'm done taking all my photos, it's really easy to edit these type of photos that I model because I simply just put a preset on them. So essentially all I do is I upload them into Lightroom. Once I have them uploaded, I'll go ahead and put my preset onto one of the items. And then from there, because I do pay for Lightroom, it is $5 a month extra. If you go up from the free version, I'm able to bulk edit those items. So I'll just select all of the items and then paste my preset onto the other ones and then after I'm done adding my preset I'll go in and check some of the items some of the yellows or the tans just to make sure that the color isn't off too much at all and if I need to do any changes on them to make sure that they match the true color I'll go ahead and do so that isn't majority of the time so most of the time from there after that I'll go ahead and just export them back into my camera roll and then put them straight into drafts so editing my model pictures takes the least amount of time. However, editing the pans and items that don't fit me from hanging don't take as long, but we'll go into how I photograph those now and then editing them afterward. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I photograph items that I'm hanging up on this board here. First off, I got this board at Lowe's or you can get it at Home Depot. It's a melamine board. It has this white coating on it, which is nice if you want just a clear white background. And then from the side here, you can see it's kind of like this cork. It's extremely heavy, just so you know, it's not easy to move around. I'll give you the dimensions of what my board is, but this board comes humongous and you do need to go ask a worker to cut it for you. And so they'll cut this. This was maybe about 75% of what the original board was. As you can see with my setup, one of the things I dislike, sometimes I'll raise the lights here, is I get this gradient depending on the time of day. So that's just how my setup is, but I'll work with it. And then I do just have a command hook I've placed on here for hanging the items. So when I'm photographing, and this is what I also do if I want to photograph the back of the item for after I model the items, it's the same type of thing. And I'll go through all those photos. In addition, if I need to photograph something on here, I'll take a photo of the front and then I just flip it over and then I take a photo of the back. If it can be in square mode, I keep it in square mode. If not, I just go ahead and make sure I can get all the item and then I'll crop that out later and then put it into the collage, which I'll talk about. And then after that, I'll just take photos of the tag on the inside and then the care tag wherever that is. So I take the care tag and then the brand tag on there. And that is pretty much it. Um, other things to note is, I mean, it is kind of on a slight angle just so that I can stand up and not fall over, um, which sometimes can be nice, but that is it. It's pretty quick. And sometimes why I do love photographing things just on like this, it is quicker, but you know, I personally like the look of modeling better. So I guess they both have their pros and cons. After I'm done at taking those photos, what I'll do first, because majority of the time there are either pants or dresses, I'll put them into a side-by-side -side collage. I use the photo editor app, but there are so many different apps out there that are free that you can use for any layout collage maker. So essentially just find one that works for you. Maybe you have one already. For my photos, I do take out the border so that there is no white edges along the side of it. That's just my preference on how I prefer it to look and to make it look clean. After I have that collage together that I have now, I'll go ahead and upload that into Lightroom and then put my preset onto that photo for the pants. Sometimes depending on the photo, since I do use stock photos for the items that I don't fit into, I'm not as picky about how this 
item is edited, I'd rather care more so about the fact that it is true to the color and people can see in a way that is accurately described. So sometimes if I feel like I can't get the color right with my preset, I'll just go ahead and leave it without any editing on it. And then that way I'll just have the stock photo front. That's the most important when people are seeing. And then once they get into the photo, having the background that I do, it still is presented in a decent enough way and people much more appreciate it knowing that they're seeing the true item than having to figure out the color if there is any slight changes because with my lighting here in the wall sometimes when I photograph it has really weird hues and it would just take more editing in terms of fixing the shadows and that's just not worth my time and that's why sometimes I just don't go ahead and even worry about the filter if it's a top or something that fits into square mode I'll just skip the collage and then go into seeing if I want to go ahead and edit it most of the time like if it's a men's item that I can't find a stock photo for such I will go ahead and put a filter on it because if it's my main photo I do want it to be brighter and more attractive for buyers to see. So the last type of way that I do my photographs are my shoes and for those I use a light box so I'll go ahead and show you how I photograph those. This is where I photograph my shoes. I will link the light box that I use. I like the size of it however it doesn't really fit the boots so sometimes I do have to go ahead and figure that out and just model those or put them somewhere else. But you just flip the switch on and keep it plugged in. Lightens up. I have it on full brightness. So when I take photos, I just will kneel on the ground here and then take them like this. And so the first way that I put them, I actually got this from um, Kristen at Boys Verb. And I kind of put it out like that. And then this one back tilted a little bit and then... We'll slide it back and then I'll take it that way and then I take it a little side on. We'll take it that way and then I get the fronts and I usually actually will kind of like take it up this way. I'll take a picture of the toes and then I flip it and then I get a picture of the back and I stand up and get an overhead and then I will take any photos of the inside if there's any flaws i'll take a close-up and then i will flip them upside down whatever fits usually for shoes like this like i'll stack them on top of each other and then take them that way and that is it when i take it like this the sides do come up so i will go over how i edit that to take that out but that is pretty much it for the shoes another reason why shoes can be nice because i can get through them pretty quickly but cleaning them is what sucks now shoes take the longest to edit because I do use Snapseed to go ahead and take out any of the background of the box if I need to and lighten up the edges to essentially remove the background. And so with this, I do everything on Snapseed. So once I'm in Snapseed, I just open up the photo. First, I'll do the healing feature and I'll go ahead and take out those sides. That makes it all just cohesively white background. And then I go ahead and remove the background by using the selective feature. And that's automatically sets the brightness so you don't really have to do anything else. You just have to click around the photo and then increase the brightness to make it white. So this editing feature works best when it's not having to grasp different contrasts of lightness to dark. So when you're using this editing feature, if there is any specific really dark shadows on there first, you'll want to lighten that up first. That way, when you go to do the rest of the photo, it more cohesively takes out the background. Sometimes if you don't do this, it'll make it extra bright and end up taking some brightness onto the actual item and make it look overly edited. So just something to be aware of. That is actually why I do also use Snapseed over any other editing tool because I find a lot of other tools will make it look super edited or if it takes out the background on its own it'll cut out weird features of the item and so I find that with Snapseed I have the most control over it so it's not as edited and look more like it was just taken with a really white background so after I do all that I pretty much have finished editing my photos for my shoes depending on the color of the shoes if it's more of a gray or a colored item then I'll go ahead and add my preset onto that but if it's black I usually just leave it as is the other exception for using Snapseed is I don't use it on white items because that is another way that you can get into the issue of over for editing because you're having a white background with a white item when you use a brightening tool it will take the brightness onto the item again as well and you end up washing out the item so with white shoes or bags or whatever 
I'm photographing in the light box, I'll just go ahead, upload that into Lightroom. I will do the healing if I do need to use that in Snapseed, but I'll go ahead, upload it into Lightroom and just use my preset onto it. And that brightens it up enough and gives it a lot better of a look than washing out the item. And again, depending on which shoes, I will sometimes use a stock photo or find an item with someone wearing the shoe to use as my cover photo. So sometimes using the filter isn't exactly needed for the cover photo. So that is how I photograph and edit all of my items. I feel like I'm at a place right now where I don't change anything. I've come a long way with photographing my items. I'm pretty much almost on every photo layout under the sun other than using a mannequin. And so I've tested them all out and where I've come up now with how I do my photos is how I'm happy with them. Obviously I'm making good sales for them. So I don't really plan up on changing anything. Here are some photos of my past. I've done flat lays, which is what I pretty much did when I very first started. And then I moved into some hanging items. And then I changed up how I modeled a bunch of different times just because this was a period of my life where I was moving so often. And so I did mirror modeling. And then I also did modeling just with a tripod, which honestly, that's where I learned that I don't like that because it's so much harder to control how to take the photo. That's why I like taking a mirror photo. I feel like it's so much more quicker for me to do that. And I have more control of how I make sure that I am posing the way that I want to. And then I also went back to hanging photos for a while. And then I moved back into modeling. So there's a lot that I've learned a lot the way. And I feel like over time, as you're continuing to perfect your pictures, they just get better and better. So don't feel bad if you're starting off and you feel like you don't love your photos because I feel like everyone starts off that way. No one starts off with a perfect photo, but there's so many things you learn about what works for you and what you like over time that eventually they'll get to a point that you're happy with. So some things I've learned along the way with the first thing being, and probably the most important thing to know is that it doesn't matter which type of layout you use for your photo. It just depends how you execute that layout. You can be successful with any type of way that you photograph, but there is also for every single type of way, a good and a bad way to do it, or just photos that don't end up as nice looking and then ways that you can make it the best where they're pretty much all in the same playing field. For example, I look back at some of my old modeling photos and even photos and poses that I did just a year ago and I'm like uh like I do not like that way that looked that's probably why it didn't sell it just I did not make the item look good and that's another thing to remember with the execution of modeling is just because you model an item does not mean that it's going to make it sell faster necessarily and you can still do more harm than good sometimes with modeling because just because when modeling an item you can make the item look better you can also kind of sometimes make the item look worse if you don't do it in the right way and sometimes in specific poses if you don't make it look good then people can go to your item and be like oh i don't that doesn't look good at her that way so like it probably wouldn't look good on me and so i'm not going to buy it like i mentioned before with looking at my old modeling photos i think some of them i honestly shouldn't have included a photo in and sometimes when i'm relisting older photos i'll go in and see there's a specific photo of the modeling that doesn't look as good and i'll just delete that photo out and even now when I'm photographing items, if the item doesn't look good in one of the three poses that I'm doing, usually the second one, then sometimes I'll just not take that photo because I'd rather leave that out than add in a bad photo that will make the buyer not want to buy the item. By even taking one modeled photo and then just taking a photo of the back, you're already doing way more than so many other sellers out there. So don't feel like because you're modeling, you need to take thousand angles of modeling the item. So with execution in order to execute whatever layout you're doing the best, the main things you want to pay attention to is that you have great lighting. Natural lighting goes honestly such a far away and you're taking the phone away with the type of lighting where you can really just see the item in a really clear state. That's really the most important thing that people are looking at the item in the photo and it just makes sense to them. If they have to look at it and they can't figure out specific details because there's shadows, or because the lighting's not very good, and then overall, if you just have that clean photo, it's gonna look nice to the eyes. And that it doesn't mean that it has to be complicated. So don't over edit the item. Don't feel like you need to add in so many different things to make it look nice. Just take a really nice photo that allows people to see the item and that will go a really long way. 
But I know lighting can honestly be the hardest thing to control and your environment you might be in a place where you cannot have natural lighting or certain spots of your area that you're only allowed to photograph you just don't have good lighting into it and that's when presets and editing can be super helpful and that's why i have my preset crisp and clear on my website for 2.99 to help out with anyone that does have any lighting issues with it it helps me so much with my model photos it does help me a lot with my shoe photos when they're white and it can be super helpful with my hanging photos as well so you can check that out on my website we cloth collect com if you're looking for a tool to help you out otherwise there are a ton of other great presets out there or editing using sliding scales to make it look better however those just can take a really long time which is why i created the preset so it can just be really quick to edit and you don't have to waste so much time editing because when you are taking a lot of photos and you're listing a lot of items that time adds up Another thing that I've learned is that branding and keeping consistent photos goes a really long way over time. If you have consistent photos where people can look at your photo layout and they know that that buyer is you, they can potentially go to your item over other items. That's why even though stock photos can be really great and nice to look at, having your own branding of the item where they can see it differently because everyone uses stock photos can allow you to really set yourself apart. For example, if someone's bought from you before, they can easily recognize your items when shopping if they had a pleasant shopping experience, they can know I did like shopping from that seller, like I would like to buy from them again. I can trust that it was a good experience, that I'll get a great item and that they'll be fast and responsive. So I'm gonna go shop with them again versus even if a photo does look nice, then they don't know anything about that buyer. Or even if someone hasn't shopped from you before, but maybe they have, they keep seeing your photos everywhere. They've checked out your closet because they've always been intrigued by your photos. They've seen that you get great reviews. They see that you're active. And so even if they haven't shopped from you before, just by seeing that photo and putting two and two together they might want to shop with you because you do seem like you put off a good customer experience and that's why sometimes I think people think modeling is one of the better ways to do it but essentially I think it's more along the lines of because modeling of item it gives it so much more individuality where you can tell exactly whose item is who in addition to like seeing the fit which is huge but again like I said modeling can be bad but having that individuality really helps with branding because people know that's you over time, but you can still do so and brand your items in different photographs by adding different little like plants or little things around a photo to make it stand out. But I wouldn't recommend anything crazy, but maybe adding in a little bit of green, a little bit of like gold or something of that, or whatever you feel like is best for you, then that can be really helpful. But the most important thing is that you keep the placement the same over time so that it is recognizable and that you're not just changing things. If you're not happy with your photos, feel free to keep testing out you will eventually get there it really does just take trying so many things sometimes to know what's gonna work for you so don't give up you will get there so now it's Yay! giveaway time and I am giving away with list perfectly one month's free of their service so with list perfectly in terms of tying it in with this video one reason why i love using list perfectly as a cross-listing service other than just cross-listing on your own is that when it comes to the photos it can help make sure that the photos are keeping their quality as you transfer them to a different site if you keep manually cross-listing sometimes by saving the photo or if you're screenshotting the photo on a phone it can decrease the quality over time so that is something that you want to be aware of so therefore if you're using list perfectly it can help defeat that and make sure that on every single single platform over time, you are keeping up with the quality of your photos. So to enter the giveaway, all that you have to do is subscribe to my channel, subscribe to List Perfectly's channel, and then comment below how you photograph your items and then what platforms that you cross list to. And then I'll announce the winner in next week's video. If you do just want to go ahead and get started with List Perfectly, you can use my code RECLOTH for 30% off your first month leave any other general questions or comments down below or you can send me a private dm on instagram at recloth collection if you like this video give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to keep learning more tips and tricks within reselling if you are looking for more resources within reselling or tools or any free resources i do have a ton on my site reclothcollection.com so be sure to check that out and make sure you stay tuned for next week's video bye